Hi there and welcome. It's Jennifer McGuire and I hope you're having a good week. So slider cards are very popular right now, uh, mostly magic slider cards. And I hadn't made any until now because I wanted to be able to show you a few different options so that you can really stretch this card design. So I actually have three options for you today. One has a hidden photo, one has a hidden gift card, and one is a more traditional slider card. Now for these cards, I decided to use the Lawn Fawn Magic Slider Die Set. Now you could create your own magic slider card without this die set. However, since I was showing three examples, I thought it was best to use this set because it makes it really easy to do. I plan to make more of these for teacher cards this season. Okay, so I've cut my little dies apart. Most dies come with that are still connected. It's part of the manufacturing. When I cut those little pieces of metal off, I use wire snips and I cut up against a baby wipe. So it catches those tiny little pieces of metal and I can easily throw them away. Okay, so I'm going to start cutting all the pieces needed to, take, to make my first magic slider card. The first piece I'm going to cut is a piece of acetate with this basic rectangle die that's included in that die set. This is Judikin's embossable window plastic, which is perfectly clear, and I can heat emboss this if I want to. It will stand up to the heat. Now we need to cut our pocket. And in the front of our pocket, we could cut three different windows, either a heart, a rectangle, or an oval. And those are all included in the die set. And they have faux stitching on both sides of the cut line. I decided to go with the heart, so I'm taking my pocket die. I'm holding it upside down on my work surface and doing the same with the heart centering it up and I'm going to put a piece of micro pour tape across it just to hold it in place. And you want to do this on the side of the pocket die that has that little piece of metal sticking off the bottom. Now I'm just dabbing this with my anti-static powder tool so that that tape that's exposed isn't so sticky so I don't have to worry about it sticking to my paper too much when I run it through the die cut machine. So now we have our pocket ready and it has that heart die cut from it. I also cut two of the channel dies. You can see those like U-shaped dies in the middle. I cut two die cuts and that white slider piece. All of those dies again are included in the die set. Next, I'm going to glue my photo to the inside. This is the photo slider card. So I printed a photo small so that I could include it in here. I'm holding it so it's positioned right behind that heart and then I'll close it into the pocket. So it's glued to the inside. It doesn't matter that it's crooked. Now I'm going to use some strong Be Creative tape. This is eighth inch wide, and I'm putting it right up against the edges, just the side edges and the bottom edge of this pocket die cut. Now I'm gonna remove the bottom tape release paper and put this little channel piece right up against that. Once I have it lined up right against the bottom, I can remove the side release papers and pop those long pieces right into that adhesive. I find by positioning the bottom first, I can make sure these are straight and going right up against the edge of the pocket die cut. Basically, we're creating a channel for which we can slide our little slider piece in and out of this pocket. Now I'm going to repeat this process and glue another channel die cut right on top. I find that when I stack two of those channel die cuts, it moves a little bit better. So here's our slider piece and I just put it in this little slit here that the die cut created. And then I have my slider piece in place. And I'll show you how to really put that in place in a moment. Next, I'm going to do some stamping. This is an exclusive stamp set that Lawn Fawn created for Simon Says Stamp. Now this is actually a mix of different images from previous exclusive stamp sets that Lawn Fawn had created for Simon. And this is limited edition. This is, these images have been very popular and I'm glad they're all together in one place. I'm going to use the Friends Forever image on this card. Now I'm using my Misty stamping tool just to make sure I stamp this nicely, but you don't have to. I have my slider piece pushed in up against those channel die cuts in there. And I'm just going to close it up in here in my Misty. I'm closing it temporarily. And I'm positioning that Friends Forever image right over the opening. Then I close my Misty onto the stamp so it transfers to the door of the Misty. Now I've got my slider piece pushed up against those channel edges using my anti-static powder tool and stamping this with black VersaFine ink. I'm going to remove that slider piece and add some clear embossing powder and heat set it. Now if you didn't have a Misty, you could instead trace that heart onto the white slider piece so you know where to stamp your image. 
Okay, so now you can see that the Friends Forever shows perfectly through that heart. But now we need to finish the rest of our little slider pocket. And one thing I want to add is a piece of acetate. I don't have to add this, but I think it gives a nice finishing touch. So I put some strong adhesive around that heart opening, laid that piece of acetate that we cut before over it, and now we can close our pocket. So I'm going to put the little slider piece through that little hole up there on the top of our die cut pocket. And I'm going to put one more layer of tape over those channel walls. So these channel walls are just going to kind of guide our little slider. So you wanna make sure you use strong adhesive. So I'm going to line up my little slider so it's between those channel walls. You don't want it overlapping. And I'm going to close my pocket right onto it and check this out. Once you press that down, you can easily move this little slider piece up and down and it reveals a fun little photo inside. You could do a stamped image inside, you could do whatever you want. But I think a photo is really fun to do. Okay, so now I want to pull this together into a card. There's this little tag topper, this little pull piece included in that same uh, Magic Slider card die set. I die cut it and then I stamped pull here from the Lawn Fawn Push Here stamp set that has lots of interactive stamp images. So a person knows to pull this tab to reveal what's inside. Now I'm adding this onto a piece of pink cardstock and then I wanted to add an additional sentiment on the front. So using an older Lawn Fawn stamp set called Little Bundle Stamp Set, I'm going to use the Lots of Love sentiment. I thought that would be perfect on this card. So I white heat embossed it on a red cardstock strip and I'm gonna add it right on to the front of our card. I'm then going to glue some red and pink hearts that I die cut from the Birch Press Hearts Aglow die. You can see it there at the bottom of the screen. One of my favorite dies of the year. And I'm just going to add this on to the front of a mini fog note card that I created. And I finish this off by adding some pool colored baker's twine to the top of the pull tab. Now this card is smaller, but I'm putting it in a basic envelope that's normally used for four and a quarter by five and a half inch note cards. So the card is smaller than the envelope, but that's okay. I think it works perfectly, especially since it matches so nicely. I also added some clear gemstones just for a little bit of accent. Now on the flap of this envelope, I white heat embossed the sentiment that says handmade card inside. That is from this new Flora and Fauna stamp set. This one I actually included on my favorites list from this year, and it's now available. And that sentiment is perfect for stamping on an envelope. You could even use that envelope stamp on the bottom of the set to decorate your envelope if you wanted. Okay, so now it's on to the third version of the Magic Slider card for today. And this one holds a gift card. So this one I'm using many of the same supplies. I used the same Lawn Fawn Magic Slider card die set. I created a pocket from some uh, mermaid cardstock here from Lawn Fawn. Then remember that rectangle die that we used to cut a piece of acetate earlier? I cut a piece of white cardstock for that, and I'm adhering that in the inside of that pocket so that the inside is white. So now I'm in my Misty assembling my stamps that I want to stamp on this. I have a cute little dog from that Lawn Fawn Simon Says stamp stamp set and Santa Paws in there. And I'm going to stamp that with a Copic friendly black ink. This is Hero Arts Intense Black Ink. I'm choosing this because I'm going to do some quick, quick Copic coloring on my little doggy. Now when I first stamped him, he was headless, so I had to stamp him again. So I'm glad I used the Misty in this case because I could get perfect stamping again. Now I went ahead and did some basic coloring to him. I just colored him brown with some peach cheeks. And now we can add our little channel slider pieces. So just as last time, I put some double-sided tape along the inside edges of my little pocket. And I'm adding on to that a stack of two channel die cuts. The channel die cuts, again, are these U-shaped pieces. So I stack two on top of each other. Now this time, I want a gift card to slide too. So I'm making my little opening there, that little slit in that, a little bit bigger, just a tiny bit. I mean like a sixteenth of an inch bigger on each side, just so it slides better. I'm also using my tape runner to add a Starbucks gift card onto that slider piece. So it hangs off the edge there, but that's okay. I lined up the bottom of the gift card with the bottom of the slider piece. And you'll see that this does still slide through it. Now, before we close this, I want to put a piece of acetate on the front of the pocket. 
So I put some double-sided tape around the pocket opening or the window opening, added my piece of acetate, and now we can go ahead and close this guy. So I need to put some more double-sided tape. Use a lot of strong adhesive on this guy. The stronger the adhesive, the better. And we can take our slider piece with the gift card on it, put that right in there, make sure those little feet on the slider piece fit between the channel die cuts. And now we can close the pocket on it and check it out. The slider piece has a gift card attached to it, which I think is really fun. Okay, so now I'm going to decorate the front of that acetate window so that when it's closed, it just has this, these little floating images, but when you open it, you see the doggy and the rest of the greeting. So I stamped, stamped the Santa hat onto some white cardstock and I'm going to color him very quickly with some Copic markers. And then I'm going to add him to the front of the acetate with a piece of foam tape. So I'm going to open up my card or pull out the tab so I can see where to put the little hat. And then when I close it up, the dog's not there. I also stamped here comes dot 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 onto a white cardstock strip, which I adhered to the front of the plastic too. I'm going to add some old snowflake sequins to the front of this using some Tim Holtz collage medium that dries strong and clear so it's perfect for this. You want to make sure you add these while your tab is open so you don't cover up your doggy die cut. Okay, then I wanted to add a little tab onto the little slider piece. This is another tab shape that's included in that die cut set from Lawn Fawn. And I stamped another pull here message from the Lawn Fawn push here stamp set. And that adds just a little bit of a better place to kind of grab a hold of this to slide it in and out since we have the gift card on there. So here's the finished card. When you pull the tab, you can see the dog and the rest of the message in the inside. I added some clear gems onto it also, just for a little bit more interest. But there you can see it's clearly a gift card that the person can remove, and it has that fun, unexpected little doggy on the inside. And again, I used a matching envelope where I white heat embossed that flora and fauna handmade card inside sentiment. And I really like that I can stamp pull here onto the tab so the person knows it's interactive. Okay, this brings us to our third card, and this is a more traditional magic slider card. So on this, I have die cut a white rectangle, the same one that I used to die cut my acetate. I'm going to glue that on the inside so I have somewhere to stamp and color my images. I also put some double-sided tape up there around the rectangle window. That way I can add my acetate piece. This time we're going to heat emboss on that acetate. So you could do that before or after you glue it onto this pocket. I decided to do it um, after I glued it down. So now I'm going to grab my mini Misty stamping tool. Again, you can use an acrylic block if you want to. You just got to line things up. And I have my Merry Christmas message from that Simon Says Stamp Lawn Fawn stamp set. And my little mouse. I'm cutting between the Merry and the Chris mouse so I can stamp Merry only on the acetate. And I can hide the rest of the greeting on the inside. So I have my mouse and my Mary. I'm going to close my Misty onto that. Use my anti-static powder tool because this is an acetate we're heating on. So I want to make sure I don't have any uh, static on it. I'm going to ink up my image with Versmark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. Then I'll add some Hero Arts silver embossing powder. Now when you're putting embossing powder on this acetate, it will want to stick to it. So you need to flick it pretty, pretty rough, pretty firm, so that you knock off that excess powder and then you can heat set it. And there we have our silver heat embossed image on the acetate. Once it's cool, you can wipe away your anti-static powder that is left behind. Now I'm going back into my Misty, adding the Christ Mouse message so that we can stamp this on the inside of our little pocket. So on this, I'm going to silver heat emboss the Merry Chris Mouse, and I'm going to black ink stamp the, the little mouse. And these will line up with the images that are on the acetate since we're using the Misty. So now I have my black little mouse that I can color with Copics, and I have my Merry Chris Mouse that I stamped with Versamark ink and can add silver embossing powder to. Okay, so I did some quick Copic coloring to my little mouse, nothing fancy, but I colored him in on the inside there. And I'm adhering my little uh, channel pieces onto the bottom of the pocket here, just as I did before. And again, I'm gonna stack two on top of each other. 
And then once I have finished stacking those two pieces on top of each other, we can close up our little pocket after we put our little slider piece in. And I just have a plain white slider piece here. Make sure the feet of your slider are between those channel die cuts. It fits perfectly. They designed this just right. And close it up and check this out. When you pull the tab, you can see the colored image on the inside and the rest of the greeting. I added a silver string bow to the top of the tab and added some more little snowflake sequins and little gemstones. So this one's really fun when you slide it open because you see the rest of the greeting and the coloring. So there you have three different ways to create a magic slider card using the Lawn Fawn die set. I think it's a great set. Many ways you can use it. I hope this inspires you. All the supplies are linked in the YouTube description below. In the middle are two other videos I recommend. Uh, one using some of the images from the same stamp set and another by my friend Kelly Marie who owns Lawn Fawn showing her versions of Magic's color slider cards. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon and have a great week.